Hey, welcome back. Uh, now we're going to talk a little bit more about the technical side of things. Some of the elements of the strategies that we're going to be presenting are based on trend following techniques and there are many, many ways to define trends. People will ask me all the time, Ed, how do I know that something is trending? Well, you could use moving averages. Uh, you could use the ADX indicator. They're all useful at very times, all these different indicators. But you and I, are, we're going to keep it very simple for the purposes of this course. Because no matter how complicated the method is, there's no perfect method for determining the trend. So let's keep it simple. An uptrend is a series of higher highs and higher lows. And a downtrend is a series of lower highs and lower lows. If you're having trouble determining whether or not something is in a trend, the trend is probably not a very good one. You should be able to just look at the chart and just by eyeballing it say, okay, it's obvious that we're in an uptrend or it's obvious that we're in a downtrend. And if you can't do that, if you're looking at the chart and you just can't tell, is it an uptrend, is it a downtrend, I can't tell, then it's probably not a very good trend. Okay, now, when it comes to trend following, I get the question all the time. You know, let's just say the price is moving up, it's moving up and it pulls back, it moves up, it pulls back, it moves up and it pulls back. And the question that everybody wants to know the answer to is, well, is that pullback, is it going to keep going down? Or is it going to pull back and go higher? You cannot know the answer to that question in advance. You can only know with the benefit of hindsight. Otherwise, you would know the future. And if you could understand, if you knew the future, you'd be a very good trader. But we don't know what the future holds. We live on the hard right edge of the chart. We don't know when it hits that peak and pulls back. We don't know if it's going to keep going down or if that trend is going to resume. But what trend followers do is we assume that the trend will continue. We assume that this pullback will turn and go higher. Why? Because trends have a tendency to keep going for longer than most people assume. Trends can go on, as we'll show you in a moment, for years. Okay, so if you're always betting on the trend to end, to reverse, you're going to find yourself going against the trend quite a bit. And I'll tell you, a lot of people get run over like that. It's not a good way to trade, in my opinion. Now, sometimes you're going to go long on that pullback, and guess what? Your stop's going to get hit. That's going to happen. That's part of the game. You know, you can't play baseball and never strike out. You can't be a quarterback in a football game and never throw an incomplete pass. You can't be a trader and never lose. Okay, I don't, I, there's no such thing as a trader that never loses. I haven't, I, I'm pretty sure I would have heard about that by now. I'm pretty sure he would have been on the front page of the Wall Street Journal or he would have been on CNBC. I'm sure I would have heard about that. It doesn't exist, okay? It is impossible to win every trade. But we don't have to win every trade to be successful, okay? Don't worry about losing as long as we can lose properly, okay? So going with the trend is going to increase our chances of success. Now, the concept of a trend is transferable to different time frames. So you could have a trend on a five-minute chart. You could have a trend on a 60-minute chart. And so that, that whole concept transfers from one frame to another. Lower highs and lower lows is a downtrend. You can see that on the chart here. Uh, you can see that it forms, basically it looks like an inverted head and shoulders. Reversal breaks out and begins to form higher highs and higher lows. This whole concept of trending, it's the same concept that is transferable again to different time frames. Here we can see the same sort of concept on a much longer time frame. This is the weekly chart of the S&P 500 over about a 10 year period. And you can see that the S&P 500 on the left side of the chart, we have the dot com crash, the dot com bubble bursts, and we have several years of downtrend. People who were buying on the way down just kept getting run over again and again. You have to go with the trend. Then we bottom out and we break out to the upside and we run upside. We have a bull market for years after that, years. And if you're going against that bull market, again, you're going to have a lot of problems. I'm not saying it can't be done, but wow, you're really fighting the tide if you're going against this trend. Then we form a top and we break down. Huge bear market, the Great Recession, and we have a long and very, very sharp uh, reversal here. And if you're buying into that reversal, 
you're probably going to get a margin call. Let's face it, you're going to get run over. And once again, when that ends, when that bear market ends, we break out to the upside and we see higher highs and higher lows once again. So the same concepts keep coming back. So when we're in those downtrends, we're simply looking for shorting opportunities. We can look for stocks that are forming double tops, head and shoulders. We can look for stocks that are overvalued and short them. And in uptrends, we're doing the opposite. When we're in a bull market, we want to go long. So we want to buy some good stocks that have great growth rates and maybe trading at a discount to their growth rate. And we have specific methods to teach you how to do that coming up and also during our mentoring class. So just go with the trend. Continue with that trend. That trend is your friend until that trend ends.